Hello, my beautiful people. How are we doing this fine evening? I am Dr. Charlie Ware, here to discuss optimal health with chronic disease, in particular sickle cell disease and also thalassemia. This is a question that I get very often about, um, you know, how can I live the best life that I can if I have sickle cell or thalassemia? And I tell individuals very easily, you can live your beautiful, a beautiful life if you have any sort of chronic disease, especially sickle cell disease and also thalassemia. It's always our, our approach to life, guys. And I'm going to um, define something real quick. What is optimal health? Optimal health can be defined as many different things, but optimal health is really the scope of essentially how your lifespan is going to be optimized or 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 live within the confines of how you are doing your life. Let me sort of expand upon that. So no matter if you are a supposed healthy individual, no matter if you have a chronic disease, whether it be sickle cell disease, thalassemia, lupus, uh, even some cancers, you can still live what we consider it to have optimal health. Just because you have a disease does not mean that that's going to limit your lifespan even. We know some individuals with sickle cell disease have lived to be 70, 80, 90, even 100 years old, depending on how they live their lifestyle. Some individuals that have been diagnosed with cancer still live a full life as well. Optimal health has to be a personal thing that you have to decide and you have to define for yourself. What do I really mean by that? What I really mean by that is... First and foremost, you have to put aside the diagnosis. I know it's hard to do, especially if you're a parent of someone that actually has any sort of disease. You got to put aside the actual diagnosis and then focus on what really is health, what really is going to make sure that you are giving and getting the uh, optimal health that yourself and your, your child actually needs. First and foremost, as I always and always say, guys, you have to look at what you're doing lifestyle-wise. Are you allowing your body to actually rest? Are you actually allowing your body to be hydrated properly? Are you allowing your body to actually be nourished properly? And how are you handling stress? There's a recent um, article about longevity, how individuals are living to be 120 and sometimes 150 years old, which is actually unheard of, but they're looking at different ways to actually make this happen. The top way that they're saying still on how to achieve achieve optimal longevity and also optimal health is by doing lifestyle modifications, some supplementation, some stress management, and also rest. Above even looking at your genes, yes, there, there are some genes that actually trigger some longevity. Some people have longevity genes and things of that sort, but even with that, it's only 20% of that is really a case of, of really saying how long you're really going to live. Case in point, it was a, a, a woman, she was 106 years old, smoker. And, you know, every time she went to the hospital, her doctor said, what, you need to stop smoking, it's going to kill you. You need to stop smoking, it's going to kill you. This lady was 105, 106 years old. Her doctor was like, well, you know, you need to stop smoking. And she's like, yeah, I've been hearing that for about 70, 80 years now. And he and the doctor was like, uh, so why haven't you stopped smoking? She's like, well, everyone that has told me that has already died already. She's 106 years old, so she outlived individuals. What I'm talking about really, what she had was resiliency. She, it was something she, that she was doing that combined together that actually allowed her body to have this resiliency. And so the main thing that I, I want to talk to you about today is actually how to really build resiliency inside of your body. First thing, let's start with diet and exercise. Diet, again, guys, you got to realize that I don't care, you know, your thought process towards what you're eating. I don't care. You're a paleo, you're a keto, you're intimate fasting, you're vegan, you're whatever it is. Whatever you put in your mouth is going to do one of two things. It's going to elongate your health or it's going to shorten your health. Bar none. I don't care what you're doing. If you're not eating real food on a daily basis, let me get this straight and clear to you guys. If you're not eating real food on a daily basis or you're not feeding your child real food on a daily basis, that means you're doing things that's also hindering the optimal health process. So a lot of individuals start to get confused or say, well, I don't know what to eat. First things first, if it's not real food, if it's not a fruit, if it's not a veggie, if it's not a protein or animal protein or even, you know, even these fake proteins, you know, guys, I'm, I'm vegan, but, you know, I, I, I hit these fake meats really, really hard because like fake meats are not real food. A healthy protein can be lean fat, lean meats. It can be eggs. It can be even tempeh. Tempeh is a fermented style of uh, uh, soybeans, which you won't have even, even all the soybean issues. But if you have just a good, healthy way of eating, guys, 
your chances of living a lot longer and have optimal health is going to be, I think uh, last that was 250 times more likely to have better health than anybody else. Just by doing it, even if you didn't exercise one day in your life, but you ate real food, fruit, veggies, and a solid protein, you're going to be healthier just by doing that right there. So when I have a lot of parents that say, well, well, I feed my child healthy, and then all of a sudden we start going over the amount of crackers they're given, uh, uh, the amount of different sip-ups they're giving, the different juices that they actually are giving. It's, a, it's the different like packaged goods. I'm like, once you start getting to these whole packaged good um, games, guys, I don't even care if it's something that's supposed to be organic. It's going to take away from optimal health because again, preservatives are preservatives. They even, you know, even if you you say have something that's organic that's packaged, they're using more salt and more sugar to preserve it to be a longer, or they're using some sort of oil to make it preserve to be a, lot, a little bit longer. So you gotta be very, very careful with that. So the, the first thing is always gonna be start with what you're feeding yourself and also your child. The second thing is gonna be how are you now sort of figuring out what levels of vitamins and, and minerals that you're deficient in on a daily basis and how are you going to supplement those? So, you know, I'll just give you an example. Most individuals with sickle cell disease is zinc deficient. How do you make sure that you get enough zinc in, inside the body? You already know that most um, individuals with um, sickle cell disease and thalassemia may have a deficiency in iron or have too much iron inside their system. How are you going to also measure those things? So that's why some, some, some biometric tests are definitely necessary for you to stay, you know, abreast of things like that. The other thing I always get, especially with, uh, with sickle cell disease, is, oh, you know, how can I get the hemoglobin up? How can, how can I also get the hemoglobin up? And I tell individuals, I say, hey, I've seen individuals with a hemoglobin of a 6.2, and they're living the best life they can live. I've seen individuals with a hemoglobin of a 10, and they're living the worst life they can actually live. It doesn't really matter about the hemoglobin, I'll say overtly, but there's ways to actually, again, Control the amount of inflammation inside the body. That's through diet, first and foremost, and also hydration. And the second thing you want to think about is, again, back to those nutrients that you have to put in your body on a daily basis to make sure the body is getting all the nutrients it's supposed to have. Okay? The third way we're going to actually make sure that you live in your optimal health, how are you handling stress? How are you really dealing with the stress? How are you dealing with the stress of having a chronic disease? How are you actually dealing with the stress of your child having a chronic disease? And then making sure that you're not passing along your stress onto your child as well. Because we see that a lot, right? It's called conditioning, right? The other thing is how are you dealing with stress when, you know, financial or relationship-wise or just life in general? How you are handling your stress, guys, really matters towards your health. Uh, see this and make sure you, you turn your volume up when you hear this. Over 90% of the ER visits are due to stress-related issues. Anxiety, stress, panic attacks, things of that sort. 90% of the hospital visits to the ER in the U.S. typically is because of that right there. Okay? So realize that stress is a real thing. Stress actually changes the chemistry of our body um, completely. It produces a hormone called cortisol. That cortisol leaves inflammation everywhere in our system. It changes our genetic makeup. It changes the way our genes make different proteins that makes, you know, supposed to make us healthy. Then it'll make us more inflamed. I had a patient here recently that I told her, I say, listen, you're not getting fat. It's the fact that your fat cells are just inflamed because you're so stressed out. There's so much cortisol into your system. Okay, and that's what actually happens. So that again takes away from your optimal health, the way you handle your stress. Make sure you're doing things on a daily basis to relieve stress. I don't care if it's going for a walk. I don't care if it's going for a nice, easy workout. Again, sometimes we go and do some of these workouts that are real um, strenuous on our body. We may be losing weight, but we add more stress into our body as well. Or we're reading, different meditation, prayer. All those things are going to relieve your body of stress, but you got to make sure you're handling the stress efficiently. Again, the way that um, this longevity works is, again, the, the biggest thing, the biggest factor really list, realistically on longevity was how you're managing stress and what stress factors are adding to your body. Thus, you're stressed out, so your body starts to do some chemical changes and it takes away from your longevity as well and your optimal health. So make sure you're doing that. The last way is also how you're sleeping. These are very, very simple things, guys. I'll give you some, some more stats. If you're not sleeping between seven and nine hours a night, you are now taken away from your body's ability to naturally detox itself. Your body naturally detoxes itself on a daily basis. 
That's why you poop, pee, sweat, you know, have tears in your eyes, whatever it may be. That's why your body does this on a daily basis. If you're not sleeping efficiently, you're not allowing your body to actually do all the process it's supposed to do completely. The most common one is something called beta amyloid plaque on our brain. If you're not sleeping at least seven to nine hours a night, it takes at least seven uh, hours to actually have our body, our brain itself, detoxify. So this beta, beta amyloid plaque that's on our brain that our brain produces because we're constantly thinking, right, is not washing itself away. It's been shown to actually be one of the leading causes of dementia and also Alzheimer's disease. So that can take away from your optimal health if you're not sleeping properly, guys, just by not sleeping properly. So it's very important you do just that there. And unfortunately, I have a lot of parents that let their kids sleep, you know, whenever they want to. And their kids are going to school not well rested and having behavior issues and also having learning ability issues. And it's usually because of the fact that they're not sleeping properly. I always encourage parents, I said, you got to make sure your child, I mean, I should have said before that, you know, infants until like three years old sleeps between 12 and 15 hours in, uh, an actual day, a lot, right? And then from there, like three up to about six, seven years old, about 10 to 14 hours. And then even up to teenage years, they should be sleeping between nine and 10, 11 hours a day, you know? Is as we adults that you know we can sleep you know maybe eight to ten, to nine hours, but if you sleep anything less than that, you're really hurting your chances of having optimal health. So when I again, this is all about sickle cell and thalassemia. These are the basic uh, principles, the basic foundational principles. When I tell individuals about anything, if you have a concept with me, I stick with these principles first and foremost. What are you doing to actually make sure that you're laying a foundation of just plain optimal health? Are you giving the proper nutrition? Are you allowing the body to rest and, and learn how to deal with stress? Are you now also allowing your body to recover and sleep properly? And then what are you really doing? I go back, I'll circle back around to the whole stress thing. What are you really doing to allow your body not to feel the stress and also make sure your child, if, you, if you're the caregiver, not be able to feel the stress as well? It's very important, guys. You got to understand these are the most simple things that we can do to optimize our health in any chronic disease, but especially when it comes to sickle cell and also thalassemia, the more stressed out an individual with sickle cell is, the faster the oxidative stress happens to the actual cell itself, and the faster that cell goes from being nice and round to flat, the faster, okay? Already, sickle cell and thalassemia individual, this red blood cell may only last, you know, a month, if that sometimes. The more stress you out, uh, out you are, the more re uh, reactive stress you're under, the faster it actually starts to flatten out, okay? So just by sleeping, the body is able to recover. Just by eating, you know, getting the proper nutrition, you're giving now the nutrients the body needs to actually keep that cell nice and round. It, uh, again, you may also go into a stress, uh, a crisis occasionally, but again, you're still looking at being able to recover faster. You're still looking at being able to have a higher hemoglobin. You still are looking at making sure that the cells itself and also the arteries, the veins, and also the brain is going to be the best that it can be. The best way to do that is focus on stress, sleep, nutrition, and hydration. Those are the best ways to actually make sure that ultimate health is something that you can actually take on is easy for you to do. It's cheap, it's free for the most part, okay? So thank you very, very much, guys. And how you doing, Janie? How, how you doing, Janie? You doing well today? Love seeing you, love, 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 love seeing you guys here. And guys, please make sure you sign up for our newsletter. This and so much more information is always inside our newsletters. We try to give so many lifestyle modifications so you guys can live the best life you can live. It's not always about taking a supplement. It's not always about working out and exercise. It's about really understanding the information and how to live the best life you can live. And that's our goal here with Healing Blends and also giving this, you guys this information to make sure that you're getting the proper information, the most simple information to live the best life you can. So thank you. God bless and have a great one, guys. Take care.